Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be on my top warm spicy fruity florals. One of my favorite scent types is fruity florals. I wear fruity florals year round and I just enjoy warm spicy fruity florals in fall. So I have here six. I do have two additional honorable mentions. I definitely have a lot of warm spicy fragrances. The first two are warm spicy floral fragrances, not really fruity florals, but there is a fruity note in it. So I decided to add it because I really enjoy these first two that I'm gonna mention for fall. So we're just gonna call this a top 10. And I'm gonna go over two other ones that I can't believe I completely forgot at the end. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so again, the first two I'm gonna mention are more warm, spicy, floral fragrances. So first up, we have Twilly de Hermes. And this one is a spicy, kind of zesty, clean, chic fragrance. This opens up with like bergamot and the bitter orange and ginger. So that's where I'm getting kind of that zesty spiciness from. This has tuberose, jasmine, orange blossom. This is like your white floral. And then there's vanilla and sandalwood. I don't really get anything too sweet in this one. This to me is more about that kind of top opening. This is one of those fragrances that I don't really lose the top notes. I pretty much get all the notes. It's not that it's linear because this is unique to me, but I do get kind of all the notes blended from like beginning to end. This doesn't really have a top that fades. I get that zestiness pretty much the entire time. And then I really pick up on the jasmine. Sometimes jasmine, especially when it's more of that synthetic jasmine that's added to fragrances can come off a little bit more like fresh and clean a little soapy not overly soapy like i know some people don't like overly soapy fragrances that's not what i mean it's just it gives me kind of that clean jasmine scent instead of that indolic more realistic jasmine very pretty warm spicy chic white floral fragrance and again that is twilly the Hermes. another warm spicy white floral but this one needs more tuberose is Givenchy's L'Entradite Rouge and this one the spiciness comes from that pimento leaf that's in here but also they don't list cinnamon but something comes off very cinnamon and almost like a little cherry cola vibe this one also has ginger that's kind of giving it this zestiness i find Twilly to be a little bit more zesty and this one to be a little bit more spicy. This also has sandalwood, patchouli, and vetiver. So this one definitely is a little more burgundy lip, a little bit more vampy and more night to my nose, but still kind of classy and chic like Twilly the Hermes. And again, that is Givenchy's L'Entra de Rouge. Okay, then next we have Tiffany and Company Rose Gold. This one they have the keynotes of black currant, blue rose, and ambrette seed. And I do feel like this one has a soft spiciness that's coming from that ambrette seed. Ambrette tends to come off musky, kind of smoky, but like a soft, subtle, like incense-y smoke. And then you get this fresh black currant Black currant either comes off kind of fresh and fruity to my nose or like an intoxicating kind of wine black currant. Those are the two kind of accords I get whenever I see black currant listed. So this one is like a soft, spicy, fruity rose fragrance. This is musky, fruity, fresh, it's aromatic. And even though they don't list like a spiciness, I do get kind of a soft spiciness from this one. There is something in here that's tickling my nose. And again, I don't think that they list everything. There could be pink pepper that they're not listing, but there's just something that's tickling my nose. This one I would say is a little bit more soft spicy. This next one's another rose, but this one's more, this one's definitely more warm spicy. This is Van Cleef and Arpel's Rose Rouge. And this is a fragrance that definitely changed over time. When I first got this one, it reminded me a lot of Elizabeth and James Nirvana Rose. That one could have gone in here as well. That one's a little bit of a kind of boozy rose and it's got like a smoky vibe to it. 
This one's got like a jammy, kind of raspberry, rosy scent to it. This is one where the black currant is a little bit more intoxicating, more boozy. This has pink pepper, bergamot in the opening. This has vetiver. And this one also has like a cacao powder. I don't really get anything cacao, but I do get a slight bitterness from this one. And this one also has patchouli but I don't really pick up the patchouli. I pick up the vetiver in this one and that jammy rose. And again, it's got like an intoxicating opening. It falls in that same scent family as Rose's Berberanza, but I did not like the opening of that one. And that one was a little bit more strong and harsh. I did prefer this one. If you like that one, that one's just, I believe that one's discontinued. You might really like this one. This one is softer, but it gets stronger with time. It's more spicy and more of like that jammy rose now that I've had it for a little bit. It's kind of sexy with that vetiver. And again, that is Van Cleef and Arpel's Rose Rouge. Okay, then next we have BDK's Passa And the next two I'm gonna talk about are a little bit more on that mandarin fruity side. This one has mandarin orange, this one has ginger, this one has quince, it has black pepper. This is very spicy, I would say out of all the ones I'm gonna talk about, Rose Rouge by Van Cleef and Arpels, and this one are the spiciest. I really pick up on the pepper note that's in here. So if you don't like overly pepper fragrances, I don't know if you'll like this one. I don't really pick up the patchouli. I get more of the amber wood that's in here. I pick up more of the ginger, the mandarin orange, and the pepper. And this is one that i really enjoy the scent of this i just do not like the performance so this is one that i can't overspray. what i've been doing is i've either been layering with this one or i've been wearing it here at, at home and just topping up because if i overspray it to try to get it to last i don't like the scent of it there's some fragrances that when you overspray it it kind of changes the scent of it at least to me it changes the scent profile it becomes more of a kind of burnt sugary scent instead of a fruity scent. But this is a really nice kind of spicy, zesty, fruity floral. And again, that is BDK's Passa Soie. BDK and this one I, I would say are all day fragrances, but if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know that this one reminds me of the sun rising or the sun setting. And this is Soleil by Lalique. And this is your fruity floral gourmand. But to me, this definitely has more gourmand touches. And I like to mention that every time I talk about this fragrance, because if you're a gourmand lover, you might be disappointed because I don't find this one to be a gourmand scent. I think it has gourmand touches. Like I do pick up on a sweetness that's coming from the praline, but it's not like a thick praline. I also get this like tonic feel that's probably coming from the cafe latte, but this to me is definitely more fruity. It's more uplifting. It's not what I would consider a gourmand, but I still enjoy it because I do enjoy those kind of touches of sweetness to it. This also has a pear note, but it's not pear fruit. It's pear granita, which is an Italian dessert. This has mandarin. This has cardamom. That's what's coming off kind of like spicy to my nose. For me, this is a bright, kind of invigorating, but also cozy, lectonic kind of fragrance. It's definitely more of a vibe, I've always said, than it is about the notes. It's just a very pretty but unique fragrance. Kind of understated, it's different, but it's an understated kind of pretty fragrance. So again, that is Soleil by Lalique. Okay, and then next we have my scent of the day. This is Modern Muse La Rouge. This is another kind of fruity rose fragrance. This does have jasmine in it, but I get more of the rose. I feel like the jasmine is just kind of adding a freshness. That jasmine tends to do also red currant. Again, black currant gives me a freshness. I feel like maybe the freshness that I'm getting in here, kind of that clean, chic, kind of out of the shower scent. Again, when I say soapy for this one and also for Tuli del Mez, to me it's more like you you smell fresh and clean out of the shower, not like a bar of soap, if that makes sense. This is a freshness. You get a freshness from this one that's coming from, to me, the jasmine and the red currant. This one has raspberry. I do get a rosiness from this one. It's got a slight 
like jammy rose. This falls in the same vein as La Via Belle and Rose, but that one is sweeter. This one's more fresh and clean. That one does have, I believe, pink pepper. This one's definitely got a little bit more of a spiciness to me. This one has pink pepper and saffron. Saffron has a kind of bittersweet spiciness to it, to, to my nose at least. So that's what I get with this one. It's very pretty, chic, and clean. Very, I don't know, New York to me. So again, that is Modern Muse La Rouge. We have another kind of warm, spicy rose. This is Narciso Rodriguez for her Musk Noir Rose. So this one has plum, pink pepper. This one's musky, but it's not. I don't want to say it's not the famous Narciso Musk, but it's dialed down. Like if you don't care about the Narciso Rodriguez fragrances because of the musk, because it's kind of the same in all of them, to me it definitely floats in the background of this scent. To me the star of this is that plum and the rose. Like those are the two notes that I get the most and then I do get kind of a spiciness from this one that's coming from the pink pepper. This one also has tuberose and vanilla. I don't really get, I mean, I get florals in here, but I don't really get that kind of classic tuberose, whether it's the sweet floral tuberose or kind of your buttery tuberose. This doesn't come off tuberose to my nose. This to me is a warm, spicy, plummy rose fragrance with a little bit of musk. Very beautiful, nothing loud or crazy but still kind of sensual and sexy. And again, that's Narciso Rodriguez for her Musk Noir Rose. Two more, I can't believe I forgot these. So in my top five for life fall edition, I had someone leave this fragrance as one of their top five and I'm like, how did I forget this fragrance in my warm, spicy, fruity florals? Cause this is like so warm, spicy. But that is White Fig and Bourbon and this is from the Clean Reserve Avent Garden Collection. This fragrance is intoxicating, it's warm, spicy, it's fruity. It's spicy from the black pepper, an intoxicating fruity fragrance from the dried fruit. And then this has like a woody base. There's vetiver in here. I think it's bourbon vetiver to be specific. There's um, fig in here, the fig, kind of adds to the fruitiness of this fragrance, but I don't really get the fig. Let me pull up the notes, cause this is kind of last minute. This has red tea, magnolia, bergamot, cedar, bourbon, vetiver, and papyrus. This is a warm, spicy, fruity fragrance with like a woody base. And it's probably the sexiest from the whole entire clean collection. This one I do believe is being discontinued, but if I can find it, I will link it below. And this is one that I definitely, it gives me more fall vibes, but I wear this one year round because again, it's a little bit lighter than the next one I'm gonna talk about. Kind of falling in that same intoxicating, warm, spicy, fruity fragrance, we have C Le Parfum by Giorgio Armani. And I was gonna put the 2021 version because this one is discontinued, but every now and again, this one does pop up. And I kinda wanted to talk about a different fragrance. I did talk about the 2021 in my top five for life fall edition. And this smells a lot like the original, the 2014 C Intense, and the 2021. But I don't get the freesia that I get in the original and in the 2014, but I do get that famous black currant, which comes off very intoxicating and very, again, kind of like that wine top. And it's just oh, so sexy. The warm spicy in here is coming from the amber and the benzoin and then the incense. I get the vanilla in here, but it's not coming off like a vanilla fragrance. It's adding a sweetness, making it one that I call a little bit more holiday, a little bit more festive, because you get that intoxicating black currant at the top, you get the warmth from the amber, and then there's something adding a sweetness to it. So the vanilla in here, again, it doesn't come off overly vanillic, it comes off like a sweetness that makes this one the holiday version, in my opinion but another beautiful, warm, spicy, kind of fruity fragrance. I would say these last two aren't overly floral to my nose. This one does have jasmine, this one has osmanthus, but another gorgeous, warm, spicy, fruity fragrance. And again, that is C. Le Parfum. So those are my top warm, spicy, fruity florals with a couple of warm, spicy, floral fragrances. What are some of your favorite kind of warm, spicy fragrances 
that you enjoy wearing for fall. But that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.